Welcome to the Revit Tutorial Lesson 3. In this lesson, we are going to learn three things. First of all, we will create a section view by creating section mark. Then, we will try to create structural wall for ground floor. Finally, we will create more complicated floor slab for first floor. Before the lesson start, you should complete the last assignment. Now in the 3D model, you may see 17 columns and 2 floor slabs. Structural column and structural floor slab belong to same discipline. If they are overlapping, Revit will automatically correct. For example, if we delete the mass concrete fill above the ground floor slab, you will see that the column is attached to the ground floor. Let's go back to ground floor structural plan. Next, we will draw section lines A and B. This is the section A. Section line is an imaginary line that cuts through the building. Just like an invisible knife. It will cut through the cake, and you can see the cross section. Go to the view tab. You will find the section button. Section line A is drawn between grid lines 2 and 3. Remember the section line should not cross over the column. The section line contains a arrow. It indicates the view direction. Click the blue arrow to flip the direction of the section. Click the little blue arrow and drag the dotted line to adjust the view depth. The view depth will determine how much we can see. Let's draw the section B. Place section line B below the grid line C. Adjust the view depth by the blue arrow. If you move the section line instead of the dotted lines, it will not change the view depth. Let's try to go to the section view. Right click the section A and click Go to View. You will see a rectangled box. We can edit this box. Click the little blue arrow and drag the dotted line to adjust the view range. We can also edit the 3D grid line in section view. Let's extend them to a higher place. Also for the level lines. The level lines should cross the grid lines. Let's go back to ground floor plan. In this section, we will do some practices about wall. First, we will learn how to create a wall. Then, we will learn two parameters of wall. A wall is controlled by two levels, the level differences and offset determine the height of the wall. Another constraint is the wall direction whether it is building from high level to lower level, or sometimes opposite. Finally, we will try to change the thickness and material of a wall. Let's go back to the ground floor plan first. Go to the structure tab. After clicking the wall button, then find the wall we needed in the properties. However, we can't find a wall with 150 mm thick. So we need to duplicate a new wall. Select the 200 mm wall and clicking the edit type. Then you will find a duplicate button. Click the duplicate and make a new wall with 150 mm thickness. Rename the new wall into generic 150 mm. Then click OK. Now we need to change the thickness of the new wall. And like column, we cannot change the thickness of the wall directly. We need to go to the structure editing. Here, you can see the layers of the wall. In the thickness column, you can change the value. Change it to 150. You can also change the wall material. Click the three dots next to the by category. 
Select any concrete type as you like, then click OK. For example, we can choose concrete cast in situ. Let's do some practices before we actually draw it on the ground floor plan. You may try to draw the wall by clicking from one point to another. Next, we draw another wall with a different constraint. First, change it to height, which means it builds from the bottom to top. Then, change it to connect to first floor. Now, let's go to the 3D view and see the result. You can see the difference between the two walls. The first one is the wall which we did not change the constraints. The one we now select, is the one that we set the height constraint. If we don't check the constraint of a wall properly, a wall would be modeled incorrectly, like the one the arrow is pointing at. Let's go back to ground floor plan. Now, you understand the basic concept of a wall and the importance of wall setting. Let's try to draw the highlight pink wall. Now, let's draw the wall. Under the structural tab, click the wall button. Remember to change the wall setting before we draw. Select the height button. So that the wall will be modeled from ground floor to first floor. The warning shows you the new setting of the wall. Now, the wall is not connecting any floor. Therefore, we need to change the top constraint to first floor. The wall is on the mass concrete fill which is 150 mm thick. Therefore, the base offset of our wall is also 150 mm. We can also change the wall location line to help us. Let's select the exterior for our location line, then, we can draw the wall, along the grid line. As you can see, this time, the wall is aligned with the grid line. After that, we need to redimension the wall, according to right window. On the top toolbar, select the dimension tool. And click the grid line. Finally, click the empty space to place the dimension. The offset from the wall edge to the grid line is highlighted on right hand side. It should be 1250, plus 1100, plus 250 millimeters. Now, let's change the setting out of the wall in Revit. First, select the wall. The dimension we just made should be turned in blue color, which mean it is editable. Then, click the blue dimension. Then type equal, 1250, plus, 1100, plus, 250, and press enter. Now, the offset of the wall is 2600, which is correct. However, the length of the wall has changed. We need to change it back. Select the wall first. Then, the wall now is connecting the column. The wall should be 2600 mm from the grid line. Second, the wall should connect to the column. Next, we will create the first floor slab. This time, the floor slabs are complicated. First, the boundary of every floor slab is not regular. And secondly, the level of these floor slabs are different. 
we need to create three floor slabs at three different levels. And, the red color one is the balcony, which is 4.75 meters above the ground. Why are the middle part? Is the first floor slab, which is 4.9 meters above ground. And, the yellow part, is the L shaped plantar, which is 4.5 meters above ground. Now, let's draw the middle part, first floor slab. Click the structure label. And select the floor. The notes on the right window showing that, all slabs should be 150 mm thick. Go to our window and select the floor slab. Select the generic 150 mm in properties window. Then, let's click the drawing line. Let's draw the top line first. We need to adjust the setting out of the line. Let's select the dimension tool. To confirm the boundary line is 150 mm above the grid line A. Then select the grid line. Click empty space to confirm. Let's continue to draw the boundary. Remember we only need to draw the green area for our first floor slab. We would apply the same skill, the dimensions tools, to adjust the boundary. Create a dimension, between the grid line, and boundary line. Make sure that it is 150 mm. Also, we need to change the length of the line. We can directly type the number to draw the same length as the boundary. We refer to the right hand side for more dimension information. Then, follow the green line on right window. Keep using dimension tool to adjust the boundary lines. Keep following the dimension on the right window. When we are drawing boundary lines, we can type the dimension directly. Then we can quickly determine the length of the boundary lines. Now, let's learn a tool to modify the boundary lines. Firstly, select the Trim tool. This Trim tool can help you to trim down the boundary lines. Then, select the line that you want to keep. Then, select another side that you want to keep. After that, you can see the extra line is trimmed. Let's continue. We can also use the Align tool. Then, select the target line first then select the boundary line. Finally, we need to close floor boundary. 
remember that the boundary of this floor slab is the red line as shown on right window. Under the properties window, there is a height offset. Make sure that the offset of this floor slab is zero. Revit will ask whether you want to attach the wall to the floor. Don't attach the wall to the floor, click no. You will learn how to use spot elevation to check the floor slab level. By clicking the short key, E and L, on your keyboard, it will call out the spot elevation. It will show that the floor level is 4900 mm above the ground. Click on the floor slab. And then, we can place the spot elevation on floor plan. Sometimes we will use different unit in different situation. On right hand side, you see 4.9 is meter. On left hand side, 4900 is millimeter. Next, we draw the L shaped plan to floor slab. Click the floor slab and use the straight line to draw the boundary. Let's draw the L shaped boundary. When we are drawing the line, we can type the number for the length. You may press D and I for dimension tool shortcut. The first dimension is done. Let's keep changing the dimension of this L shape. Dimension tool can be multiple. We can keep clicking the lines to create more dimensions. Instead of a number, we can use calculation function. Just type equal 3850 plus 650 in the dimension. Press enter or click empty space to confirm. Now, we have two more correct dimensions. We may also enter dimensions by a simple calculation. Type equals 500 plus 1200. Then press enter. The L shaped planter slab is lower than the first floor level by 400 mm. So, let's go to offset. Enter minus 400. Then press enter. Let's close the boundary. There is a span direction symbol for every floor slab. We can just delete it. Finally, let's go to the balcony floor slab. Go back to the structure tab and click floor slab. We can start drawing at the edge of the existing floor. You can draw the boundary lines first. Also, be very careful of the boundary of two slabs. Then, follow I am doing to adjust all dimensions.
the balcony slab is 4.75 meter above the ground. So it is 150 mm lower than the first floor slab level. Go to the offset and change the value. You can enter the simple math calculation. Enter the 4750 minus 4900. Click the finish button. Delete the cross arrow. Switch back to the 3D view to see the result. In 3D view, we can also edit the elements. We can see that the wall is overlapping the floor slab. We can use the blue arrow to adjust the wall. Remember to save the file. OK, that's a good place to stop. Now, let's recap what we have done in this lesson. After that, I will leave you some exercises for you to practice, before you proceed to the next lesson. Firstly, we create a two section lines according to the reference drawing. Secondly, we go to the section view with these two section lines. Thirdly, we create the structural wall. Lastly, we create the first floor slab. For the assignment part, you need to complete all tasks we've been through, including the section lines, walls, floor slab. Try your best to get your hands on these exercises and get more familiar with Revit before going on to the next lesson.